Hey, what is going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and today I will show you guys 18 settings that you should change on your iPhone in 2020. Of course, changing these settings will help you get more out of your iPhone as well as get a better experience using your iPhone and improve a lot of things on your iPhone and other Apple devices as well. So here are 18 iPhone settings that I suggest you should change in 2020. The first setting is found under the cellular settings, of course, on the settings app. So you go to cellular and you go to calls on other devices and you can enable this right here. Now, what this will do is that it will show you calls on other devices that you have nearby. So let's say you're on your MacBook and you have your phone on your pocket. You get a call. It will show you the call on your MacBook and you can go ahead and right away from the MacBook answer the call. You don't have to reach for your phone at all so you enable it right here then you will have a list of all your devices and you can enable or disable any of your devices right here so go ahead enable allow calls on other devices in order to easier answer any call that you get on your iPhone now when you go to Safari you want to open a link you can 3d touch on it and you can see right here we'll get this tab that says open a new tab so basically this will open that link on a new tab and it will go directly to that link but what you can do is go to settings and from here you can choose to open those in the background so open links if you go here you can change that to in background so whenever you're three to touch on a link you can see right here you can open that link in the background and it will open on a new tab, but it will be on the background and it won't take you automatically to that tab. So you can still browse here and whenever you need that link, you can go to the tabs and you will have it right there opened in the background. Next up is a setting found under the do not disturb setting. So if you go right here, you will have at the bottom auto reply. So you can choose to auto reply to all the contacts you're all or only your favorites and then he will have auto reply so this is the automatic reply that will be sent to your contacts if you have your iphone on do not disturb while you're driving so what you can do here is just tap here and as easy as that you can go ahead and customize this message basically add your own message whatever you want right here you don't have to send this one you can send any message that you want just go ahead and add your message here under the privacy settings, if you go to location services, you will have, of course, here all the apps that use your location. And you know, when an app is using your location, it will show that little icon right there on the status bar. But also we have system services. So these are all things that actually use your location but they don't show that little arrow right there indicating that the location is being used without you enabling it right here so by default this is disabled so you won't get that icon on the status bar unless you enable it so you can see right there how it hides and it shows the little arrow so make sure you enable this so even when system services are using your location you will still know by using the little icon right there on the status bar under the mail settings, here is a setting I suggest you should change. So it's right here, blocked senders options. So if you go right here, you will have the option to choose what you want to do with emails that come from blocked senders. Now by default, they will be left still on the inbox, even though you can mark them, but they will still be in the inbox. So if you don't want to see them at all on the mail app, just go ahead and pick move to trash. So any emails that you get from the contact that you have already blocked, they will be automatically sent to the trash folder. A new feature on iOS 13 is announced messages with Siri. So if you go to notifications, go to announce messages with Siri, you can enable that. So Siri will automatically announce you messages. So basically what you can do here is also enable reply without confirmation. So if you want to reply to a message that Siri has announced to you, you basically ask Siri to type that message. And if you just want to reply without Siri having to read that back to you first, then you can go ahead and enable the setting right here. And it won't take time to basically read that message back to you. It will just send it automatically. The next setting is found under sounds and haptics. So if you scroll all the way down, you will have here system haptics. Now what this will do is that it enables and disables all the haptic feedbacks that you get 
on your device. So what I suggest you do, basically, if you have like an iPhone that doesn't have a very good battery health and it's, it's not like good on battery life, then I suggest you go ahead and disable system haptics. That way it will just disable those vibrations that you get all the time on your iPhone. And that way, of course, it will preserve a lot of battery because as you probably know, vibrations do take quite a lot of battery life. Next up, we have a setting found under accessibility and under touch and right here we'll find shake to undo. Now, what I suggest you do is turn this off. Now, what this feature does is that it basically allows you to shake your iPhone to undo a text that you have written or something and you will do that quite a lot of times by accident. You just shake your phone and that will pop up and undo a text or anything that you have done. Now that Apple has added the new gestures on iOS 13 when you can just swipe with three fingers to undo and to redo, you can go ahead and disable this so it doesn't show by accident because now you have the other gestures that you can use instead of shaking your iPhone. Here we have another setting that is found under accessibility and under the touch settings. So if you scroll all the way down, you will have here call all your routing. Now what this does is that it basically lets you choose where you want to send your call. So when you get a call, you can choose automatic or you can choose it to go automatically to speaker. So if you choose speaker, once you basically get a call, you answer the call, it will automatically go to the speaker or automatically go to the Bluetooth headset if you have one connected to your iPhone. So let's say you're in a car somewhere, you keep your Bluetooth on, then you can go ahead and choose this. So whenever you get a call, when you answer it, it will automatically go to your Bluetooth headset. Here we have another one here under accessibility and it's face ID and attention. So what this does, if you enable this, it basically add, enables some features for the face ID, which are very, very useful. So basically your iPhone will check all the time if you have your attention on the phone before dimming the display or expanding any notifications when your iPhone is locked and of course lowering the volume of the alerts that you get on your iPhone. So you're looking at your iPhone, you get a notification, even if you have the sound all the way up, it won't just like play it with a loud sound, it will play the notification with a lower sound because it knows that you're actually watching your iPhone so you don't have to hear that loud noise from the notification. Basically the same setting can be found also for voice control. So if you go to voice control, you will find here attention aware, enable this for the voice control to wake up and go to sleep automatically based on your attention. So when you're paying attention to your phone, it will automatically wake up voice control. Of course, if you need to use voice, voice control, if you're using it, then this will be very, very useful for you. You don't need to manually enable or disable voice control or tell voice control to go to sleep or to wake up. You can have it automatically be done simply by enabling here attention aware. If you use your AirPods Pro on your iPhone, then if you go to settings and go to accessibility, you will find here a section for the AirPods. Now, if you go here, you will have a setting which you can enable and this will enable noise cancellation on one AirPod. So even if you're using one AirPod, not both of them, it will still have noise cancellation. Of course, you will have to enable this because I believe this is by default is turned off. So you go to settings, go to accessibility, go to the AirPod section and make sure you enable it right here. Of course, this can be found only on the AirPods Pro, not on the regular AirPods. The next setting is found under the notes section. So if you go to notes, you will have here a button that allows you to enable on my iPhone account. So on your notes, of course, you will have all your notes, your iCloud notes, which of course you can find on all your iPhones or all your Apple devices. And if you enable this, then it will also show another account within the notes app, which allow you to create those notes and save them only locally on your iPhone. So they won't show up on all devices. It, they will only show up on your iPhone. So they will be stored locally. And another setting that you should enable here on the notes section 
is save photos. Now, what this does is that it saves automatically pictures that you take from the notes app. So on the notes app, you know that you have the option to scan and take pictures so you can add them to your notes. So if you want to, if you want those to automatically be saved to your photos gallery as well, you go ahead and enable it right here because by default, they won't be saved to the camera roll. You will have to enable this setting, which can be found under the notes settings. And last but not least, we have two other settings that can be found on the map setting. So one of them is right here, weather condition and air quality index. So you have to enable these two. And once you go to your ma maps app, you go to city, you zoom in on the city, it will actually show you the weather conditions on that city as well as the air quality index right there and the last but not least of course is show parked location now what this does is based on the bluetooth connection that you have with your car it will automatically mark that place as you're parking so when you get out of your car it knows that you're disconnected from the car bluetooth and it will mark that as your parking spot on the maps app and that of course is very very useful so that is it for this video guys. These are 18 settings that I suggest you should change on your iPhone in 2020. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead and subscribe for more and I'll see you on the next one.